Good morning. Back again. Uh, this time I'm going to show you how to create a pattern, you know, based on using some uh, somebody else's picture. Of course, I'm using um, pictures with permission from Pixabay. So um, I have a file set up here, 720 by 540, my usual favorite. And I've already I've already gone to Pixabay to get some images. So I'm going to click on my folder. Ooh, wrong one. I'm going to click on my assignment 12 folder here. Let's move that over a little bit and reduce this a little bit. Okay. And I'm going to go in here and grab this little Egyptian hieroglyph. Drop that in and notice it's huge. So I'm going to zoom out with my magnifying glass. And go to my scale tool, click in there once, hold down shift and drag a corner in and you'll maintain your aspect ratio. Again, it's important that you hold down shift, hit enter, and let's go back and grab our move tool here and move this guy into focus here. Okay, so let's zoom back in. wrong way and there's our guy there and we're going to use this little guy to make a pattern here of some kind and again I'm trying I want to you want to avoid banding or a look that looks like all the images are uh, separated with a straight line so I'm going to kind of just distribute these around randomly um, hey let's make this a little bit smaller too while we're at it then I can increase size on some of them when I need to. So small is good for this. Uh, go ahead and grab my move tool again. And we'll start up here in the corner. And let's just go ahead and take this image and duplicate it. So I'm going to click the create a duplicate of the layer several times. I'm going to make about 10 of these to start. Okay. And now I can go ahead and just move these things around in random spots if I want, just by duplicating. And I can just go down the line here. And again, I don't want things to look too banded and perfect, so I'm going to move things around kind of randomly. Let me bring that one down. Uh, okay, that one there. We'll leave that one there. And let's see if we can get a pattern going here. Okay, I'll move this guy over. Uh, so I'll probably have to create some more here, it looks like, but that's okay. we got a good start here. Okay. Uh, move a few more in position here. Just kind of offset them from each other a little bit. And there's our last one there, so let's create a few more. Um go up top here to be easier. We're going to duplicate that guy right there. Made about 15 more. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, so now I'm going to just kind of randomly place these things around again. And the idea here is to create a pattern here but offset them enough to where it looks more or less it'll look more or less continuous when we move things around and we start tiling maybe like that grab a few more here and just kind of stagger them and I think that'll uh, make a difference in terms of the pattern here 
and I probably are going to need I'm going to need some more here. We'll see. So you can take an image that somebody else has created and make it turn it into a pattern, which is kind of fun to do, especially if you're using an image in which you have permission to use. So again, highly recommended to avoid copyright infringement by using uh, somebody's photo that without permission. Um, so that's one thing that I really want to stress in my class, and that is to uh, observe copyright laws. As a graphic artist, you'll be required to do that if you want to avoid a lawsuit. <clears throat> so just food for thought. All right, so we're going to make a few more here. Uh, duplicate again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Probably ten more would be more than enough, right? So let's do that. Grab a few more here. Let's place one of these about right there again keep them staggered uh, to the best of my ability All right there we go we can put one in between there we can resize them too as we need to for example I may put one right here in fact I will put one right here and then maybe one in the corner here and make it uh, Let's make it smaller though. So let's go ahead and click here. Click on the image, hold down shift to maintain an aspect ratio and grab the move tool here. Actually, maybe we'll work, focus on keeping them the same size. That's kind of an interesting way to do it. So let me delete that one. I don't need that actually. And let's keep going with these. Move tool, make sure you have that selected again. And we'll just try to use the same size here to make things a little bit simpler. So I can move this guy down here and then maybe move this one over. So you can kind of make adjustments as you go along. All right, um, that one's already there. Okay, good. Now let's grab this one. Again, staggering is a good good idea. last one there. We have a couple more. Good. That might be the last one there. Okay, so it looks like we're going to make a few more. And I'm just going to go to the top layer, So which is... Where is it? Oh, right here. Okay, so now I'm going to just duplicate that. Seven more, just to see how many we can fit in there. And again, staggering them is a, is a big help. It's going to really help you. Okay. And then just move this guy down in the corner. Maybe right there. And we'll have to move some around a little more, but we'll get it figured out. I certainly have plenty of uh, pharaohs now. Okay, and then maybe move this guy down here. And is that the last one? Okay, move that one over here a little bit. Um, and so there we go. We got a nice little pattern going on there. Um, now I just want to move some of these around just a little bit. Um, so I can click down here and just look at them. Okay. That one looks pretty good right there. Maybe move this one around down here a little bit. All right. And just go through and uh, review them, basically. Okay, and this guy here. Um, yeah. Let's bring them out here a little bit. And then this one over here in the corner is good. This one's... Eh, yeah, that one's fine right there. This one needs a little bit of adjusting and or movement, so I'm going to bring this guy 
maybe uh, stagger him a little bit more right there. And then the one underneath him, when we get to that, we'll bring him over too. So I can go here. Go out right there. Uh, let's see. Okay, and this guy here, move him out a little bit right there. Okay, that looks good. Let's move this guy out a little bit. Um, And just move them around a little bit, create some separation. Um, one thing that you can do to make it easier too with the selection, if you double click your selection, you can just choose um, pick a layer or guide. And I think what that'll do is select the actual, oops, no, maybe not. Maybe you have to get right on the guy. Yeah, so there I can just select if I choose uh, pick a layer or guide under my uh, move tool, get right on the object, it'll select that automatically and that'll speed things up for you. Um, so just a little tip there. Let's move this guy down. Maybe move that guy down. So that'll, that'll speed things up. Sorry I didn't show you that before. Um, you can move these up around too a little bit. And again, the idea is to create some space, but not too much space between them. And even that's going to have a banded look, I think. But um, the idea is to kind of randomize it a little bit more. That looks pretty good right there. I think I can live with that. So now that I have all these uh, guys gathered here, I can do a lot of things. I can actually even invert this but let's flatten this image so we're going to go up to layer and we are going to choose new from visible okay and we can actually delete all the rest of these let's see if i can shift click these nope can't well we'll just leave these alone here we won't worry about those but we're on now we're on the top layer and that's going to be our flat image so i'm going to name it Okay, so I know which layer I need to be on. Now here again, I can change the background. I can even invert it. So if I wanted to invert it, I would go up to um, colors, invert. And there, that's kind of a neat effect. So what I may do is, uh, I love how that's working out right there. So let me duplicate this. I'm gonna click the duplicate and leave one regular and one inverted. So let's go again up to colors and choose invert. And so maybe now we can blend those images too. Um, you know, I could bring the opacity down and notice there, now we've got a new effect there. That's kind of interesting. Some are black, some are white. That's kind of cool. Um, we can also do colors as well. So we can add some colors into these, of course. So on this image here, I may want to uh, grab my uh, fuzzy select tool just try to grab the black in the area if I can and just paint can in a color let's try uh, some kind of an ivory or I mean not ivory sorry a violet color and notice there it changes the uh... oh I'm down huh I was down here okay so never mind let me get rid of that shift control a to deselect Let's bring these images to the top. That's where we want them. We want them at the top of the food chain here. So I didn't realize that uh, those were underneath. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, take a look at these. Again, we can put either one on top of the other. Actually, I kind of liked it how it was before. So what I'm gonna do
bring these back down here and then take that image and flatten that. So let's go up to the top here. Now that I'm up at the top, now I can flatten this to keep the uh, silhouettes here. Okay. But before I, well, now let's go ahead and do that now. Um, so we're going to go to the top here again, go to layer and we're going to do uh, new from visible. Okay. So now when I turn these off, you'll still see those silhouettes. I didn't want to lose that. And let's just turn these off all the way up to this image here. Let's bring this image up as well. And that's just right underneath there. So that's cool. We've got both of them working now. And again, if I, f if I bring that down, you get a, a nice color variation there or you could bring this one up top and do the same thing and that looks kind of neat too but as far as the pattern goes you may want to try using one of your modes so I'm going to go over here and try some different modes here and see what happens ooh that looks interesting dodge that's kind of cool so try some of these and then play around with the opacity as well Okay, that didn't do much for it, but uh, these are great. These can really add to it, take away from it. That's kind of a nice pattern right there, dark and only. Um, then you can bring out the lines. Okay, and just try try some of these different uh, settings here. I think you'll be surprised. You'll get some really nice effects. These will be hidden too much, I think, there, so I'm going to keep going here. Burns just going to darken it. So try these different uh, settings and see if you get something you like. You can also bump up the. Uh, ooh, that looks good too. That's neat. I really like that. So there's pin light here. Let's try linear. No, nothing there. Ooh, that's cool. I like the difference. Okay, so again, play around with these, uh, ooh, that's cool, I really do like that. Play around with these um, different filters here, too. Um, and so that gives you an idea of what you can do with those. Nope, divide, divide is, that pretty much just inverts it, right? So... That's cool. It gives it a little color. So I like the idea of going with uh, maybe grain extract and then seeing if I could bump up the contrast or going with, what was the one I just had there? Uh, no, not HV. Uh, value? No. Shit, what was it here? Let's see. Just had it here, hue maybe, or even hue, yeah, and then bringing out the contrast. So you could take this image, let's say, um, and let's go ahead and uh, go up to layer here, new from visible, and then take this layer here and up the brightness and contrast. Uh, let's see if we increase the contrast there or lower it play with the brightness. So I guess that's not going to really help us. Okay, so that one, if that one's not working, I'm going to go ahead and trash that and try again here. Let's go, let's put the darker image up top and see what we can do there and use some blending modes. So going down to the flat image, let's keep that on normal. Okay, and then we'll go up here to visible bring down the saturation and see if we can try one of the modes here. Well, that's kind of interesting. Dissolve here provides a little bit of a, a grain. Oops, already did that. Uh, color erase is nice too. Look at that. You get, you're getting some uh, patterns there. Okay. 
Verge is cool too. So I think with all this, so you got to think about, is it going to look tiled when you have these color variations? Um, so let's go ahead and we'll pick one here and then we'll just go with it and see what happens. Let's go with that. We'll keep it consistent. Um, and let's go ahead and go to layer again, new from visible. And let's try that as a pattern, okay? Um, so now what I can do is go in and, uh, well, let's try a filter also. Uh, let's see. We tried edge detect yesterday. Let's try another one. Let's try edge and see what happens. Well, that's kind of interesting. You can change the amount there. Uh, your algorithm here. Let's see if we have some variation. Well, I don't know if any of these are going to really do much. Border behavior, looping, uh, clipping. Let's see here. Adjust here. Okay. I don't know if that does anything, but that looks pretty good. We can make that a consistent pattern too. So you've just got the silhouettes now of the uh, pharaohs and then a black background. That looks pretty solid. So I'm going to go ahead and go up. The next step again, of course, is to um, go up and pattern this thing. So uh, next thing we do is go up to layer, transform, offset. We're going to offset by, by width. 2 or divided by 2 comma height divided by 2 so select height and width by 2 and there we have look at that we've got a straight just easy line to get rid of okay so as far as using the healing brush I could do that or I could just basically use my uh, paint brush to paint that out so I'm just going to grab a basic brush I've got my basic round brush here which is perfect make that a little smaller um, so in this case, I didn't have to use the uh, healing or clone tool, which I could use the clone tool, actually. Um, so let's, well, we could try the clone tool also. So let's grab an area here. That's perfect. Let's uh, hold down control, click an area. Now if I click here, hold down shift. Oops. Could do a straight line here shift well maybe not okay it's like i'm getting a little too much of the other stuff so i'm going to go ahead and use my brush for this i think that would be a lot easier bump it up with my bracket tool here and notice here the hardness and force are down let's bring those up to 100 percent and oops let's change our color here and that should just paint out in a second here. Once you get going. And that is a pretty easy fix right there. Take my finger off the mouse just to... And it looks pretty tricky right there, but it looks like I got it decently enough. Okay, once you get the brush going, you can just paint out those areas. So um, that was too easy on this one. Again, I don't want to erase anything off of our pharaohs, our dear pharaohs. And looks like the edges are gone. So there you go. There's my uh, image. Now I'm going to tile this thing, right? So I'm going to grab my move tool so I don't screw anything up. And we're going to go up to filters, map, and we're going to hit tile. And since I'm 720 by 540, I'm going to either double that size or triple it. Let's triple it and see what happens. I'm creating, you're creating a lot more work for yourself sometimes when you 
the higher you go up with the image. But look at this now, hit OK. And there you go, now you've got a nice pattern. And we can, uh, again, we can mess with that even more. We can grab a uh, filter here to even help screw it up even more. Um, let's again try a, a, let's try cubism on the artistic filters. And note, look at that. It just changes it into a pattern. But look at that. You can also see some tiling happening here. You see the tiles, the straight lines. So let's see if we can mess with that a little bit. Perfect. So we can bring up the tile size, eliminating any problem there with the seams. So the idea here is, for me is to get it down to as small as I can without it having looking too tiled. I just love that. That's a cool pattern right there. So I'm going to click OK and I'm going to save this one out as a pattern. I love that. So I'm going to go up to File, Export. Okay, and again, you need to know where your GIMP file is, so I'm going to just do this one more time, even though I show you in another video. If you need to find where your GIMP folder is to find your Patterns folder, click on Edit, go to Preferences, click on Folders down below under in the left-hand side here of your dialog box, click Folders, scroll down to Patterns. And this shows you the pathway to your GIMP folder that you need. One of these two will work for you, okay? Um, I use the first one, App uh, Users, Mando, App Data, Roaming, GIMP 2.10 and Patterns. I did check this one to be writable. I can uncheck that too, but I wasn't able to write into this folder, so I'm using the top one. So that's how you find that. So what you do is you go to File, Export. I'm going to go to Local Disk here, Users. This, I'm going to follow that same path. Mando, App Data, Roaming, and there's my GIMP folder. There's 2.10. And now I go to my Patterns. Double-click it in there. These are all the patterns I've saved already. So now I'm going to go up here and name it. I'm going to call this... Uh, Granite. I like that. So granite. And we're gonna do we're gonna change the dot PNG here to dot PAT. I don't know, I just like to manually change it up here. I'm sure you can find that here too. Let's see if pattern is down in the type of I don't know, it doesn't say that. There's gotta be a dot PAT though, maybe I think you think. Well I guess not. So you do have to do it manually up here. Granite.pat is what we're looking at. Uh, we're going to export that. Again, saying, is this what you want? How you want to describe it? Click export. Okay, and that should be in my patterns folder now. So I'm going to go up to um, Windows, Dockable Dialogs, click on Patterns, and then I'm going to down here below. I'm going to refresh my patterns by clicking this little arrow underneath my patterns and granite should be showing up there. Let's see if we can find it. And again, they're hard to see sometimes because um, some of the images are big inside of them. There it is, granite number one. Unless that's already been, is that somebody else's? I'm not sure. Here's granite. So that's mine right there, I bet. So if I click a new layer right here, shift click, and let's bring it down. Let's bring in uh, white on that layer. Okay, now I want to see if that's the pattern there. Just grab it and drop it in. Sure is shooting. There's my granite pattern. Okay, so that's basically one another way that you can create a pattern is start with another uh, image, you know, of course, an image that you have permission to use. And then uh, tweak it out. Use some filters. Again, use your uh, healing brush if you have to, or your clone tool or your paint brush, and eliminate the tiling look by eliminating those really hard straight seams and create a pattern that will look continuous when you stack it up next to each other.